Ladies and gents and welcome to CG Reaction and this is Obscure Units of Measurement by the channel Samonella Academy. Yes, it's another Sam video uh, and it's about measurement. So this is going to be awesome. Always those scientific topic videos. Uh, so I don't know if you're going to talk about your metric system, imperial system or going to dig up some ancient Egyptian system of unit measurement. Who knows? But it's still going to be awesome since it's Sam's video. It's going to be funny as well. I reacted to quite a few same video by now. If you haven't seen my reaction to that, check out the end card, check out the card for, I uh, created a playlist for it. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen my other reactions, there's a link in the description for all of my videos, check them out. Yeah, just hit like and subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when I upload the video. And yeah, that's what's this. Hey kids, I've been told by a lot of people that there's nothing more exciting than the metric system. They may have a point, but exciting. I can still prove them wrong. Today, we're going to talk about some specific lesser known units of measurement. First is the Schmidt Pain Index. Now, anybody could tell you that getting oh stung by God. a bug tends to hurt, but just how much does one sting hurt compared to- Oh, this is creeping me the hell out. I already hate bees, man. Look at that. Ugh. Another. Are yellow jackets worse than hornets? Are fire ants worse than honeybees? Nobody in the world of science knew for sure. That is, until a young upstart by the name of Justin Schmidt decided to boldly go where no entomologist has gone before. But how did he plan to quantify the level of pain caused by different insect stings? Well, it went something like this. Alright, honeybee. Zzz, ow, god, that hurt. I'll give that like a two. Next, paper wasp. Zzz, ah! Okay, that's like a three. He literally went from bug to bug to see how much it hurts. Talking about giving up your life for science, damn, that was so dangerous. I mean, I don't know how accurate this system would be. I mean, if he did that a single day, like one after another, pretty soon his mind would adopt to the pain and, you know, even something that is probably really painful would be less painful. He would experience it that way. So I don't know if he did that way or he did after taking proper rest. Uh, who knows? Next, let's try Bullet Ant. Jesus Christ, Mary Mother of Satan's left nipple, it's like my hand is made entirely out of urethras, and each and every one is having a red-hot catheter put in and ripped down five times every second. My very being is on fire. My only desire left is for death himself to bless me with sweet relief. Oh my belief. god. I'll give that a four. No. <laughs> Four plus. In all seriousness though, I'm pretty sure the index is meant to be logarithmic, like earthquake magnitudes. So just like a magnitude 7 earthquake is 10 times as powerful as a magnitude 6, a bullet ant sting causes 100 times as much pain as a honeybee. In total, Schmidt catalogs 78 different species of the order Hymenoptera, which includes ants, bees, and wasps. You can tell a man is really dedicated to his job when, after getting stung by 77 insects, he says to himself, you know what? That wasn't enough. I need one more creature to inject its venom into me, and only then will this list be complete. I guess you could say, he just really gave a schmidt. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Next- Man, that is something. How did he went to the top uh, painful level? And how did he survive after that? I'm pretty sure there are insects in the world that causes so much pain because of their venom that you would die. So how did he survive? Next is the Waffle House Index. So for those of you that didn't know, what? the Waffle House is one of the most resilient establishments in the world. Whereas most restaurants would simply close down in the event of, say, a hurricane, Waffle House just goes from their normal mode to disaster response mode, following extensive protocol that allows that location to keep serving customers in spite of low food supply. What? No way, really? So in the, in the event of hurricane, you know, there are public announcements that are happening, go to your house, stay in your house, and they are like, mm, we're, gonna, we're gonna stay open. I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna come in. Really? Damn, the owner of Waffle House must be crazy. And then be like, you know, the, telling the, the his employees like, hmm, there's a dangerous hurricane going on. The ceiling might cave, cave, cave up on you. You know, you might die, but you have to keep it open. Otherwise, I'll cut your pay or even a power outage. In response to this business practice, FEMA came up with what is known as the Waffle House Index, which is a system to easily assess how badly an area is damaged by a natural catastrophe. If the Waffle House is fully open, they're in the green, which means things are basically fine. If the Waffle House is using their low supply menu, you're in the yellow, which means that the area is almost certainly mid-disaster. Finally, if you're in the red, that means the Waffle House is either closed or gone. Now that's a sign of some real nuclear zombie holocaust type shit going down, so if you're 
you're not already dead, you should probably vacate the area. Most engineers could tell you that. Obviously, that's, these are just unit of measurement. Are like, you know, why the hell not kind of units of measurement. They are not proper measurements, but people are like, you know what? This is the best we can do right now, and let's call it unit of measurement. It's not much of unit of measurement, is it? It's not like imperial or metric system. Structurally speaking, the triangle is the strongest of all shapes. But I believe that there's one shape that... Because of, you know, cancelling effect of, yeah. It's even stronger. Godspeed, Waffle House. Next, we have the APGAR score. So the APGAR score is a rating system used by hospitals to determine how healthy a newborn... Oh no, there's a baby on the table, and it's a salmonella video. I hope he doesn't go too far. ...from baby is on a scale from 0 to 10. It's called APGAR based on its five criteria, which include appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiration. And each of these is rated on a scale from 0 to 2 to get your final score. Personally, I think this set of standards is a little flawed. Here's an example. Well, it's completely blue, and it doesn't really want to move at all. But it's got a really fast heartbeat and it's screaming really loudly. Oh I'd give God. this baby like a 6 out of 10. That's good enough. So in response, I've invented my own rating system. Oh my God, I knew it. He's, he's gonna... Uh, look, at 2020's YouTube. The way YouTube is going on, I'm surprised, you know, channel like this is still surviving. And, you know, YouTube like, you know, a bad channel that doesn't just uh, cancel an entire channel. It's called the RAGU score. R is for reflexes. It's common knowledge that if you hold any healthy baby by its feet and then drop it, it'll always land up right. If your baby can't do that, that's a sure sign that it's defective. A is for abnormality. No, no, if baby can't do that, then one thing's for damn sure. Uh, baby, one of the baby's parents is a damn cat. If your baby seems weird, that's typically a good indicator that it's weird. G still stands for grimace, just like in the APGAR test, only instead of looking at the baby's facial expression, you just bring grimace from McDonald's into the room and see how the baby reacts. If it starts crying, that's a good sign, because grimace is absolutely fucking terrifying. Yes. And finally, U is for ugliness, just because that might sway your decision on whether or not you want to keep it. Now, oh if the baby god. passes the test- Oh my god. <laughs> Man, he's just going all in. I love this channel, man. It doesn't care. Is there any line that he's not gonna cross? I love it. It gets to go home, but if it fails, then it gets shipped off to the factory and made into oh Ragu, my God. hence the name of the test. Some people might be upset by this fact, but you know what they say. Pray go today, Ragu oh tomorrow. My God. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Oh my god, this channel is legendary. He doesn't care. He just doesn't care. Like I said, I'm surprised that this channel is not completely cancelled. Because YouTube nowadays is just... But damn, this was, <laughs> this was one of the good ones, man. Sam, Sam really went all out in this one. I loved it. Well, obviously, lots of these measurements, uh, like, you know, Waffle House and things like that. It's just, you know, it's like, why not? Why not kind of thing? Let's just have that measurement. Why not? It's not proper measurement. And that pain thing is just, damn, that guy really gave a lot to science, didn't he? He literally put his body on the line. After all that time, he also survived. It's just weird. I love it. This was so, such a good episode, man. A good, good uh, video. All right, people. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. And check out the other reaction. Date of Sam. There's a check out the end card. Check, the, check out the card. Check out my other reaction. There's a link in the description. And yeah, I'll see you next time.